Hey there, in this lesson we're going to cover the basics of the WHERE clause. It's part of the SQL statement. It's just another keyword. So for example, if I do SELECT STAR FROM EMP and I hit RUN, this is going to return all of the data in the employee table. We're selecting all the columns from EMP. Now I can further filter this by adding the WHERE clause or WHERE keyword to this query. And the way we could do that is I could do where, and let's say I only want to see those records where the person is either, the person, let's say the person needs to be a manager, okay? So I could do where job is equal to manager, like that. So this is going to return me all of the records that uh, contain the word manager in the job column, okay? And these quotes, these single quotes that I have around the word manager are necessary. You have to have these single quotes when you are comparing data that is textual in nature or with words or sentences. Um, if I select this entire statement and hit, and hit run, it will return me all of the columns, all right? In the, in the employee table, but it's going to be filtered by where the manager uh, is, the, is the job for the particular person, right? So Blake is a manager, Clark is a manager, Jones is also a manager, all right? So we can actually break this up into multiple lines or, see, or leave it on the same line, but it's actually much clearer if we break it up like this, where we have select from where on, on three different lines. It's just easier to read that way. So the first line is selecting the different columns. In this case, we want all of the columns because this asterisk wildcard from is our source, right? What is the source? Where are we getting this data from? Well, that's the EMP employee table. Where is, um, you know, we're filtering it by some condition. So where job is equal to manager, okay? Let's do a select on the entire table again to make sure that these are the only three records, Blake, Clark, and Jones, that are managers, just to make sure. So hit run. And by the way, I selected only this top little portion. I didn't select the whole query. So it returned me all of them. And lo and behold, we only have three managers, Blake, Clark, and Jones. So let me run the entire query again. Hit run. And we get these three records. Now, as I said, SQL is a case insensitive language, meaning you don't have to worry about the case. So for example, I could do select, and then the from, I can have capital, where I can leave lowercase, job, I can have capital. And if I run this, everything is still going, going to run as expected, right? But if I do this, if I, instead of having capital manager, I can make that lowercase. If I do this, take a guess as to what's going to happen. Let me run this. And notice no data found. Okay, so this is an important thing to keep in mind. A lot of people get confused when they hear that uh, SQL is a case insensitive language, meaning you don't have to worry about capital or lowercase. But in the case where, when we're comparing things, when it comes to data, SQL needs to be very, very exact, okay? When it comes to data, when we're actually comparing the data in the, in the different cells, uh, we better make sure that um, the data matches exactly in these filter conditions, right? When we're saying where job is equal to lowercase m-a-n-a-g-e-r, right? If, it, if this particular lowercase word is not in any of the job cells, is not going to run. So let's run the, the first portion only. Again, so we have all the, all the data. So this is what would need to go there for this query to run successfully, okay? If any one of these characters is lowercase, it will not be an exact match, and that entire record will not be returned, okay? So let's run this and nothing is going to get returned, no data found, okay? So now let's check for salesman. Uh, select the entire thing, and now we only, we only get salesman, right? Alan, Ward, Martin, Turner. 
So just a, an important thing to keep in mind, SQL is not case sensitive, but when it comes to comparing data, right, using the equal, or, and you'll see other comparisons like less than, greater than, or equal to, and so on, the comparison is strict, okay? You must have the exact uh, string uh, in there when, that you're comparing against, okay? So we can filter by other columns. So we have where job is equal to salesman. Instead of having uh, searching for job, I can say where ename is equal to Alan, okay? And take a guess as to what record is going to get returned here. Well, let's hit run. And notice that Alan is the only record that got returned. So let's add some more conditions. Where job is equal to salesman. And here's another keyword. Right? We've seen where, we've seen from, we've seen select. We have another keyword called and. And and is the exact same thing as where. A lot of people get confused and enter where where and they have multiple conditions like this. That's not how it works. After you have where, uh, the rest of your conditions must be ands, okay? That's just how the SQL language is designed. So we're, now we're selecting from emp where job is salesman and we could do and sal, right? The salary is, for example, 1600, okay? And commission, right, commission is, let's say, the commission is 500. So where C-O-M-M, -M, com, is, uh, is 500, okay, the commission. Now, before I run this, take a look at this data, right, you should have the same database loaded in your system. Take a look at this data and figure out whether this query is going to return the expected result. What do you think would happen when I run this? So I'm about to hit the run button here. And notice that no data found, okay? So when this happens, and this happens a lot when you're doing a SQL development, let's say if you were expecting data to be returned, well, it, turn, it may be that your conditions are not correct. So we can start filtering out uh, one by one to see whether, whether this is the problem or uh, this particular statement is the problem. We don't know. So let's run this part first. So hit run and uh, lo and behold, this up to this point, it's correct. This SQL query is returning data and we expect it to return data. We know we have a salesman uh, as a job and we know that there's a salesman with the job with the salary of 1600, which is right here. But then when I added this condition of commission to be 500, when I add this condition to this query, this query no longer returns any data because this particular salesman with the salary of 1600 does not, does not have the commission of 500. It actually has the commission of 300, right? So we are filtering uh, this record further and when the SQL interpreter gets to this particular line, this record will not be returned, okay? Now if I change this to 300, now this record will uh, be returned by running this entire, this entire query. So let's hit run and notice that it's returning the data as expected. I can have further conditions and uh, depth number is 30. All right, select that and this record is still being returned, all right? Now, if I add another condition here and I say where ename is equal to bill, right? Select the whole thing and of course, this particular salesman with the criteria of 1600 salary, $300 of commission, 30 is his department number, and now I'm screwing the whole thing up by adding this filter where I'm saying where ename must be equal to bill. And this, of course, is not going to return what we expect. Okay? No data found. Practice with these three keywords, the select, the from, and the where. Uh, this is the foundation of SQL, right? 99.9% .9 of your SQL work 
will contain the select, the from, the where, and and the ands, okay, which are essentially just where's, but they just need another keyword to represent further filtering, okay? So uh, understand this query and uh, memorize it if you have to, the order. So if I change this order around, if I put where, for example, if I take these and put them before the from, right? if I put where job is this and salary is this and then from amp and then uh, you know I have other conditions if I if I run it you know the way I have it selected here this is not a valid SQL query it's saying from keyword not found where expected all right this is a totally inaccurate syntax you need to have from first all right after the select after the select you need the from and then you have the where clause and then you have the and conditions okay so select the whole thing hit run and uh, this is returning data now one important thing i want to keep uh, point out is uh, let's say if department number we expect it to be 30 for this record if i change this to 300 it's not going to return any data select the whole thing and hit run and notice that it's saying no data found now this is different than a syntax error this is a perfectly valid query. It's a correctly parsable query, right? The query interpreter understands exactly what we are looking for, right? This query is 100% accurate. It's just that the conditions that we are providing does not return data because that data does not exist in our table. If there is a syntax error in the query where, you know, we're using the wrong keywords in the wrong areas, that's a syntax parsing error, right? The interpreter is not going to understand what you mean. But when there is a perfectly formatted query like this with the select from where in the proper places and we're referencing columns that exist in the table, that query is a legal, you know, perfectly accurate query. It's just that there that data does not exist, okay? Another thing is um, if I, let's, let's just go back to running the bare bones select star from emp to get all of the data. And let's say that I um, reference a particular column that does not exist in this column list. Let's say that I select for L name to represent the last name. If I uh, select that and hit run, notice that it says L name invalid identifier. This column does not exist in this table. So this is also an inaccurate query, right? The interpreter does not know what you mean. It does not know what L name is. So we need to give uh, correct column names. So E name is, is, the, is the name of the column. So select that and we are fine like this, right? So column names must be correctly spelled. The, the select from and where, that's the correct order, right? Keep that in mind. Don't forget that. Uh, memorize that if you have to. And then after the where, if further conditions are required, we need to use and. I want to take a break from that uh, Apex tool that we're using and uh, go into how the Oracle database interprets the SQL statement. How does it go about behind the scenes executing that statement and returning our results at? So we're using this tool called Apex. Right? We created an account and it's basically a web page where we can uh, a trial, you know, try out the Oracle database. Well, somewhere in the Oracle data centers, uh, they have some server with the Oracle database installed on there. Okay, so I'm just going to draw that server out. Uh, let's say it looks something like this, one of those those towers, those, those big uh, PCs, the servers, uh, like a desktop computer, you know, with the CD-ROMs and uh, some drives, basically some machine uh, that we can call a server. And on this machine, the Oracle software is installed. So together, this is what makes up the Oracle database. It's a combination of the software as well as the hardware. And you can actually install the Oracle database on your computer as well if you're using Windows or Linux. Unfortunately, they don't have a version for the Mac. But the Apex application that we're using, it's a web tool that uh, we signed up for and it gives us this SQL window that we can use to, to write, select, or all types of commands that would get executed on the database. And below that editing window is the is the grid, okay? The data that we can peek into, into the database, okay? So when we actually enter a command in the editor and hit this, there's like a run button on the 
on the top right, when we hit that run button, what happens is this, this uh, query or statement, the SQL statement, is sent to the Oracle database. Okay, and the Oracle database is going to first check whether the, the, the commands that we sent are valid. Is it, a, is it a valid SQL statement? Okay, and if it is, it executes those commands and then it returns us the data, uh, depending on if we're asking uh, to see the data. If it's a select query, um, it's going to return us the data here in the grid. So what exactly happens behind the scenes? How does Oracle take this, this command and work with it? Well, let's take a bare bones select statement. Uh, we want to select some columns uh, from a particular table. And then in the from clause, we uh, give it, uh, let's say, the emp table. And let's say it has a where clause. And it has some condition where uh, sal is equal to you know 3,000 or something. OK? So once we hit this run button, this statement, right? this statement is going to be sent to the Oracle database. And the Oracle database, what it's going to do, the Oracle software rather, it's going to uh, first look at this from clause. Okay, It's going to figure out the source of the data. What data are we looking for? Where do I get the data from? Is what the Oracle uh, application is going to be looking for. So it first identifies this table, emp, and brings that up, loads it up into its uh, workspace or whatever. So let's say that it found this table uh, out of the objects that are in this in this database and it pretty much loads up the data into its cache or memory or whatever. Not important to go into those details but basically it identifies that employee table. Then what it's going to do is it's going to go to the the where clause okay and see do we have any conditions. So we have a salary is equal to 3000 condition. So what this is what the uh, interpreter, right? I keep using the term the interpreter. Interpreter uh, is a portion of the Oracle software that is just going to interpret this query and figure out what it needs to do. So the interpreter first loads the employee table, right? This is the emp table. And then it's going to move on to the where clause and then see, okay, salary, the salary column better have 3,000. So let's say there is only two records in this entire table that have a salary of 3,000. So it's going to eliminate the rest. Right? It doesn't need all these other records. Let's say this record right here and this one right here has a salary of 3,000. So in that case, what it's going to do is going to uh, bring these into a another uh, result set for further narrowing. Okay, So it has two records and uh, the all of the columns are uh, basically brought down into this result set. Then what it's going to do is going to go to your select clause and see, okay, which columns does the user want to see? Okay, the user may just want to see the name as well as the salary. So it's you know, let's say it just wants the name. I'm just going to shorthand that by saying column A, and the user also wants to see column C. The rest it's going to ignore. It doesn't need any of this other stuff. So what's going to happen is it's going to return us a uh, a subset of the data with just two columns and two records, okay, A and, and C uh, with the particular data. And that's the data that we see in this grid, okay? So keep in mind that the, the Oracle interpreter sees this query, makes sure that it's parsable, it's accurate, the syntax is correct. Then it, the first thing it does is go to the from clause because this is the source of the data. I'm just gonna uh, circle this in red. This is what interprets first. It sees, okay, do we have an employee table? Yes, we do. It loads that up first. Then it moves on to the second statement, which is the where clause, and figures out what records does the user want to see. All right, those records that have the salary of 3,000. So it loads those records up and eliminates all of the other records that it doesn't need. And then finally, uh, after it's done with the where clause, it moves to the select statement and only uh, filters out those particular columns, those attributes that the user is interested in. And in this case, it was just A and C. I shorthanded it and it loads this grid up and that's what gets returned.